Thank you, Eileen. Exactly. I had a note. It was right smack dab in front of me if I had if you hadn't been backing me up. So because I would forget it every time. So we are talking about the fellowship process and the judging process specifically tonight and taking a little of the mystery out of that. And we have a number of fellows with us tonight to pitch in and uh, participate in this really interesting discussion. So I'm sure there's a lot of people who have received the fellowship who are interested in the whole process as well as those who haven't gone through it. So I'd like to uh, welcome Dennis Kraft to kind of lead us through this because he's our fellowship chair. So take it away, Dennis. Wow, you just left the door wide open, didn't you? I sure did. <laughs> so I'm not sure where we should start. I don't know if we should go over the rules, the requirements. Um, I don't know if there's, uh, we need to leave enough time for questions. That's for sure in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think we should get some insight from some of those that I've asked to be on here, um, what their experience was as far as getting the fellowship. Uh, Doran is my co-chair, Doran Wilson, and since, uh, Doran, if you would like to sort of quickly go over the requirements for us so that uh, those that are listening would have an idea of what is required of them um, before they would apply for Quiet. a fellowship degree. Sure. Um, the first requirement is you have to be an ASP member for three consecutive years. Then you have to have 15 print merits after your master's degree. So once you get your master's degree, then you have to have 15 additional merits before you can apply. And then you have to write a 2000 word personal paper. And that paper can be on any subject that you choose to. The best thing to do is to if you're going to write about your wedding work, the last thing you would want to do in that personal paper is probably talk about your love of doing babies too. It just, the two just wouldn't go hand in hand. And the paper has to basically talk about what your portfolio, what the judges are seeing in your portfolio. Okay. So the requirements are pretty simple, but you do have to be a member of ASP for three years and you do have to fulfill the merit requirement of a, above and beyond what you have with PPA. So from here, I guess let's go to talk to some that have been a judge in my in the process for both Doran and I recently. And they can give you an idea maybe of what they sort of look for as you know they're judging a portfolio. All right, Randy, can you step in and talk a little bit to this subject? Well, I mean, I'll have some rambling thoughts on it that you guys definitely need to wrangle in. But uh, consistency in work, I think, is uh, the thing that I've seen a few people, it costs them the fellowship. For example, uh, you've got 20 great looking images and then four look like they don't have the same finish or the same richness in the blacks or, or something perhaps printed at a different time maybe a different lab or whatever but it all has to be congruent and the tonal quality needs to be even especially i think in black and whites uh if you're going with a color portfolio i think some kind of harmony with the color throughout is good randy yes. as, as a judge do you think that as an entrant, you can mix color in black and white. Oh, I definitely think you can. And we actually have somebody, Doran, mix black and white in his case very successfully. So, yes, I, I, I think that's a definite possibility. But I think there has to be some flow and logistics to it. Uh, I am not one of these people that believe that the secret sauce is the position of the images. You know, I've heard lots of people say that, oh, if you just had this one on the left instead of the right and this kind of thing, I, that may affect some people judging it. I don't think that's a factor for me at all. Uh, and then definitely, definitely 
as Dorn alluded to, the work that you're seeing needs to coordinate with the paper. And I've seen that a couple of times when people just really blew it there. You know, uh, once, just like uh, Doran related, the whole paper was about a certain area of photography. And then they had some beautiful images of senior portraits, which had nothing to do with the paper. And they were mixed in. And and, and that was a real turnoff. Um, so, and, and about the paper, the last thing we want is a biography or, or at least me as a judge. And when I'm reading the papers, I don't really want your life's history. I just want the part that tells me why you make the images you do now. And that's really what we as photographers are interested in. So. Janet, you've also been a judge recently a few times. Uh, do you have any insight as what you are looking for as a judge on a panel? She's still muted. Janet? She's uh, she's having trouble with her sound. She can't oh. hear us. All right. Okay. Well, I, I think what the where Randy has started us off at is a great place for discussion, I think. Um, I think what he, what he says is absolutely true. Every judge will be different, and that's and that's the difference in each panel when we try to put a panel together is that we have to have a mixture of different personalities. Just like on a PPA panel, you don't want all hard-nosed judges or technical judges, nor do you want all warm and fuzzy. You want a mixture, and you also want somebody on that panel that can identify with the type of work that's being um, entered into the year. That's why our deadlines are so early is so that once we know who's entering, we can sort of match judges to um, fit what we have as panels coming to us that year. All right. Um, uh, Dora, one other you thing. Got, you yeah, one, ask? yeah. One other thing that I would um, add to Randy's is if, if you're going to put a physical map on your images, the mats have to be immaculate. We have seen mats come in where it looks like a beaver cut the mats for them. And I mean, they were all chewed up really bad. And that was a, I mean, every one of the judges that we had um, made comments about that. And even if, and I can remember one year, this was, this goes way back to when we were having the judging out in, um, Pennsylvania at Bob Golding's school. Somebody took their PP of A prints off. They just pulled them off of the wall, still had the Velcro on the back of them and sent them in for a fellowship. Now, you know, I was print, told that was okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. For years, maybe. That's why it took you 10 times. <laughs> you have the record. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, We've all print crews from states to the old um, districts to regionals to IPC do a great job of doing their best to protect the prints. But after a complete competition cycle, those prints are pretty well dog-eared. And that was a definite um, no from everybody almost right away because the prints have to be immaculate when they come in. So Sherry, you're one of our more recent ones, you and uh, Christy. Do you have some insight of how the process was for you as you submitted and how the selection process was that you selected your images? Um, can you give some insight on that in those areas? Uh, for me, I, the writing the paper was the hardest part. Um, I had, uh, I have a, my best friend is an English teacher and she red penned my paper and she would uh, give me back my paper and circle something. I really like this. I want this kind of sentence in every paragraph. And it, that, that part was hard. Um, going through all the images um, was hard. Um, a lot of images that I really liked but didn't fit with the portfolio, so that was that was uh, um, a 
definite journey in learning what is going to work with everything else that that is in the portfolio and then just make everything mesh together um it was hard but i mean it was definitely um a wonderful journey going back through the years and the more that i dug back into uh, my earlier years in the industry um remembering more and more stuff it, it kind of was emotional at times and i really loved that part of about it dennis i'm going to have you clarify something that she said only not because i just want a different opinion because there's a lot of people that don't receive their fellowship on their first or second time. And part of the reason is, is that some of the work doesn't fit. And that's what Sherry said. She said, I had a lot of good images, but they didn't fit my portfolio. And that's a question that we get a lot of time. What does it, why don't they fit? Can you give some insight on that? Uh, yeah, I can't. I didn't get mine the first time. And I'm not ashamed of it. But, you know, it's interesting because I remember uh, when Don Emmerich called me the first time and they sent me the paper. One of the judges says, I can't believe you put in number 17. I, I don't know why I remember that number. I can't believe you put that in there, uh, that it was one of the worst images I've ever seen. Uh, well, he didn't say the worst. He goes, I just can't believe you it didn't mix. And then judge number five goes, I love number 17. It's the best image in your portfolio. I couldn't figure it out and why they didn't mix. And so when I went back through, um, I thought I had a pretty good mix of images. And so I ended up taking out a couple of images. And unlike what Randy said, I really tried to mix so the colors and black and whites flowed evenly. So they uh, looked cohesively in the pr presentation. And I feel like a lot of times that when people put things together, they put things together haphazardly. When I've judged and been on the committee with you, they put together images haphazardly that uh, the color seams didn't match up with the image next to it. And I, that's what I'm saying is that I think the, the style and the look have to match the whole concept. And I was one of the ones who did put a lot. I put half black, white, and half color and uh, with my landscapes. But I think the, the it's a real challenge to um, come up with the cohesive story that Randy talked about. Uh, putting those images together with color, tones, density, and storyline. Yeah. So Janet, a couple of... Janet, yeah. I think Janet has her sound figured out if you want to include her. No, forget it now. We've moved <laughs> way past Janet. She looks frozen now. Oh, she does. <laughs> we'll get I back know. to Janet. We'll get back to Janet. What? I went through, I went through 100 images to get my 25. <clears throat> I started out with 100 and, and it took that it took time to narrow it down to five. And the thing I think which is hardest for a lot of is, is they always have a favorite image, but that image may not be the one that they need to put into their portfolio. And that is that is the hard thing from a personal standpoint. Go, this is my favorite image. It's either a story about the image or how they created it or where they were but it just doesn't fit and they have to be willing to let go of that. I get to you in a second, Christy, a theme that I've heard now from three or four people that have spoken is that the portfolio needs to work together, whether it's the color harmony of the images, the um, density of the images or the black and white, the same type of black and white. Again, you can have 40 PPA loan merit loan quality prints but if they don't work together or fit together in a portfolio as a unit we're looking at this as a body of work and if they don't fit i don't care how good the images are you're not going to get the fellowship all right chris you had a hand up yeah i was um gonna see if you guys wanted to talk about this because i i think some people don't understand based on the feedback and people talking to me is they think well i have to enter all my loaned images and mm -hmm. I tried to explain to them that's not the case. Can you no, guys talk about that? Because I don't know if people understand. Like, this is not like, you know, a PPA print competition. This is very different. Correct. In fact, in my portfolio, um, one of the images that I had in my 25, the best it ever got it at PPA was a 76. You know, and so, but it worked in the portfolio. 
So that's where it needed to be. That's the reason I evidently created that image was because it needed to be in my ASP portfolio. Yeah, I think that's the biggest misconception is everybody thinks because something has gone loan at PP of A, that it's going to be an automatic fellowship image in a case. And that is 100% not the case at all. Janet, would you like to speak now since your mic is working? Or are you frozen again? Oh. All right. How about you? How are you, Gabriel? You got some insight? You've been... You've been around ASP for a, and fellowship for quite a while. Yeah, I do. It's, but I'm also pondering on some of the things that you guys were talking about, such as the order of the images. As I think it's significant in the way that when you walk in the room to judge them, you're going to have an impact from the grouping. It, but it's a, it's probably analogous to a print title. You know, it's. It shouldn't hurt you, but it sure could help you. So I think having a, a cohesive uh, arrangement of your image can work in your favor, so why not use it, right? Uh, but also, I agree with you in the, the fact that we might be our worst enemies in the fact that the, the images that we're selecting to put in our portfolio might not be they're too close to us, you know, they're like our own children. So it's sometimes that, that can blind our judgment in which, you know, I want this image there, you know, like this portrait I did of Dennis Hammond. But, you know, it might not be the best choice for that. It's like uh, we're judging for merit and uh, you see these awful images and people say, oh, this is so good. But, but you know, it might not be appropriate to enter in print competition, I think that applies also to your selection of images for your fellowship. It's it's a difficult process, but it's also very rewarding, I think. I know one more thing. The, just one? Just, yeah. <laughs> uh, when you're writing this paper to go along with your images, I, I think of it as a audiovisual presentation, meaning the paper is the audio part and the images being the visual, they have to be congruent in the sense that they have to work together as one. There. And, and again, that's the second time that that comment has been made. Um, and, and I can't tell you how many times running this, running the panels and Doran can verify this, that uh, the judges walk, walk in the room and they'll say, after reading the paper, this is not what I expected to see. And I think that your paper should reflect, they should be, have an idea of what they're gonna look at when they walk into the room. I, I do think that. Uh, so Randy, you have a question or a comment? You need to turn, turn your mic on. Maybe it's better if you don't. Randy oh, McNeely or Randy, somebody else? No, hey, Randy. Randy. Oh, Randy, which Randy? The one that's gonna talk. <laughs> Um, my question is when you're when you're writing the paper and trying to, you know, it's supposed to relate to the images. I've seen some where people actually talk about specific images, or I mean, is is that something you kind of look for? Or is do you have to talk about the images in there? Or is it the story or the your you know paper that goes along and the images, you know, kind of show themselves? I I, I never really quite understood that part. Uh, well, that would be an opinion. And, uh, and my opinion is, I don't like it when, when the paper refers to number seventeen, this number twelve, this. I, I just think the story should speak for itself, and uh, don't really, don't really. Some of you may differ, but I don't really care for the paper referring to particular images. Because it all needs to flow as one story. And you're telling that story with the paper and the portfolio is supporting it and vice versa. And so I, I, I don't particularly think that's necessary. I think that if you're sitting at home and you're struggling with how to get started down this process, you know, I think it's kind of like a, 
writing a book or, or a hit song or something, you need a hook. And that's, that's really how to get started in my opinion. And for example, you know, my hook was that I came from a storyteller Southern tradition and, you know, like our buddy Dave Huntsman, his whole thing was that he struggled all his life with uh, uh, attention deficit syndrome and how photography was a way to calm his mind and and make his life coherent. And also, I think you need to really look at your life and think about things like that. And, and then that's the good place to get started. Yeah. And having having listened to that rant, other Randy, it, I have seen where somebody would refer to their portfolio and say, you know, this is the image that changed my life. Now, I think that's different than what Randy was talking about, where, you know, number 17 was created on Thursday, March 15th. And, you know, image 25 was one of my favorite cat photographs I've ever done. I, I, there's a difference in if you refer to an image, it's got to be important to your story, to your whole story. Christy, your hand was up again. Yeah, uh, and this might be something if you guys want to talk about. When I was working on mine, I was told the judges want to get to know you. Is that correct? Yes. Is that you, Janet? Opinion. Oh, Janet, go for it. <laughs> now we lost her again. Oh, you guys, I, I keep fading in and out. Oh. Oops. So, Mr. Hammond, would you like to talk to that question that she just threw on the table? Or no? Well, <laughs> I'm just trying to reflect on what she's saying about what the judges are saying looking at the imagery. Christy, repeat your yeah, question. I was told that, the, that we need to get somewhat personal because the judges want to get to know you you know, your journey, they want to get to know you and what led you to doing the portfolio that you're doing. Okay, as I understand it, I think the judges, and I, I like getting to know the people. There's a lot of things I found out about people that I didn't know about them. But the thing is, you don't want to, I don't feel like you want to do, like Randy said, a biography and say this is this happened, but you can use the emotions and feelings uh, that what brought you to the point where you're at in your life. I mean, we all bring to all of our imagery, all the books we've read, all the places we've been and everything. And so if we highlight and bring those into our being of our story, I think it helps. But I don't want to sit and read a 30-page autobiography and then at the end read every award that somebody's won. I don't want to read all that. I want to know who that, you know, that's the old thing. I know who you are, but I want to know who you are and uh, your feelings and emotion. That's my feeling. You got to remember that a lot of these judges may or may not know any of these candidates that are actually applying. So yes, Christy and mine, I sat on the deck at our lake house at the time and me and my wife just talked and then she started taking notes and that's how my portfolio or my paper started. Hmm. So I do think, the judges want to know a little bit about you, but I agree with Mr. Hammond there that, you know, your entire paper can't be about introducing yourself. It has to talk about, you know, where you are in photography, you know, why you got into it, but, you know, also, you know, a little bit about you. Cause I, I think I have been told that one of the judges for my paper um, said they didn't, quite get to know who I was. Well, my paper actually started, I mean, I've had dyslexia, but I kept it hidden for the bulk of my life. And when I wrote my papers, when the, when I first made it public. So, you know, that, so that one kind of blew me away. It's like, what do you mean? You don't know who I am. <laughs> Gary? Um, the way I got to my paper was really similar um, to Doran's. Um, I just 
whenever I would think about something, I kept a notebook with me and I would write it, especially a timeline um, of things that have, uh, you know, major um, points all throughout my career um, and just kind of filled in the gaps as um, like the, the rules say, they, the, the judges want to know our philosophy on, in our approach and, and that um, getting to know us in that way, I, I think um, really made me think about tying in what I did throughout my career to me personally and how I felt and the direction I wanted to go. And that's kind of how I went about that. And I think that journey, the paper journey, is going to be different for everybody. Um, some people will struggle putting their thoughts on paper. Others will let it flow quite easily. In my case, my wife went out of town for the weekend with some friends. And I <laughs> sat down on a Friday night, and two and a half hours later, my paper was done. Um, but my paper was about, about the, how the children in my life have affected me and my photography and my portfolio is children's photography. So it all fit together. Um, so everybody's journey in that area is going to be different. Chris, you had your hand up. You have a question? Yeah, I have a question. If if your paper is partly about, I mean, it is about the journey. So the images, can they be from the journey or did, are they? Are you mostly focusing on the images about where you've landed at this point in your journey? Are you asking, do I want to see work from 25 years ago or no, do I want that's to see not what I'm asking. that it might be work from a year ago and so if you if you I don't know how to say this without talking specific images which I don't want to do no no I, um, I, so so oh, let me let me make up something so you're you are um you've always been a, a photographer that d does children and you have a particular journey that's now taken you into um, infants and babies. Um, is it is it about the infants and babies, or can it be about the the whole journey from children to infants and babies? I think it could be the whole journey. It could be the whole. I mean, I'm I'm just I'm I'm yeah. just yeah, not sure. That's all. Right. It, it it all depends on how you support it in the paper. Okay. If you make the paper about the journey and where you've arrived, then you can sell that in, but I certainly wouldn't substitute any older developmental photographs in the portfolio in lieu of your best work now, you know. And, and Doreen, correct me if I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's not been many in the last number of years that we've been in charge of this where the paper has actually stopped a fellowship from being awarded. You know, you guys are putting a lot of yes. talk tonight on the paper, but it's more the portfolio that's going to stick you than the paper. Um, well, we had one last year that um, unfortunately the paper held back a fellowship because the applicant uploaded the wrong version of his paper. And it was full of grammatical errors all the way through it. Yeah. And basically what he did, is, what they did is they uploaded the draft of it, not to everyone, or um, um, not the final version of it. Yeah. So, but that, it's, it, that's rare. It's rare. the only case that I can remember. I've been... I actually took over from Bob Golding um, years and years and years ago. And so, and I can't say that the paper has held too many people back. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I would agree with that exactly. Uh, you're probably right that nobody says, wow, what a great portfolio, What's, but I hated the paper and voted it out. But most of the, most of the time, I found that what had me really sold on the portfolio ahead of time was the paper. You know, it's kind of like you go to a restaurant, if you go to a restaurant and you've heard great reviews, you're prepared to like it more than you are if you've got a paper that was uninspiring. You know 
what I'm saying there, that's not a good analogy. But I, I fully believe that without my paper, I would never have gotten the fellowship with my portfolio. I disagree with that. I but. fully believe that. I think it. I've probably seen a few others that were that way. Uh, I've read Randy's paper, and it's really good. Well, He's I'm a not a good saying, writer. He's a very good no, writer. By no means am I saying that if you if your paper is um, very subpar and portfolio is fantastic that you're going to wind up getting it. There have been times where it's been a no on the paper and yes on the portfolio. Just, I'll, I'll First of all, I'll explain the actual judging process for everybody that has not seen it. And basically your paper now is um, a PDF and it is forwarded to the judges ahead of time. So they have time to review it, read it, um, digest it, reread it. And then um, once they get to the judging site, the way it is picked is names go into a hat and that's how the order is picked to get judged. And then the judges are in a totally separate room. The first portfolio is put up on a eight foot by 20 foot wall, evenly lit. And then when they come in, they first look at the, uh, they first get the first look at the uh, portfolio, but then the discussion is started on the paper and each judge has as much time as they want to discuss the portfolio yeah. or the uh, paper. Then there is a vote on the paper, yes or no. Then they can get up and look at the portfolio for as long as each judge wants. Then there's a discussion on the portfolio. Then they have a vote on it and it's a yes or a no. And then there is one more final vote and that is do the judges want to bestow a fellowship upon the candidate? And at the end of however many people are at the end of the judging process, any judge can bring back an entire portfolio to be reviewed again. So it is a totally fair process for anybody that's ever applied. The other thing is that there's five judges and you need four of them to give you the fellowship. There's there's four fellows and one non-fellow. But four of them have to agree that you're worthy of the fellowship. Right. Okay. So... Chris I have a question for Doran. Yes. Um, when you're going through this process, how, like on average, an hour, two hours, three hours per paper and portfolio, or is it just? I can I can tell I can tell you what it's averaged over the fifteen plus years I've been doing it. It's about an hour per candidate, but we put no time limit whatsoever on it. Yeah. There was you know, one a couple. Of, there was one a couple of years ago that probably went twice that long, because it was that close. And some, you know, it just probably took twice that long. And uh, before it was you know, before we came to a decision. Like I said, five minute ones too. <laughs> yeah, and there's five minute ones when you walk in the room and say, "Hey, let's just vote, please." That's not yeah. really true. That's there not some, true. <laughs> there are some when the judges walk in. They probably know in their head, right. yeah, this is this is fellowship. Because they've already read the paper. They know where they're going to be on the paper. But they've never seen the portfolio until they walk into the room for the first time. Yeah. And once they see that, they can, you know, in their mind, they can go slam dunk. So we have they, a, still, they still have to have the discussion. Yeah. Chris, just a second. I have a question online that Travis has asked that Sherry has started to answer and he wants to know the approximate cost of doing the fellowship and the entrance fee is what is the entrance fee now Ella? 370. Yeah, 375. The board hasn't changed that? Okay. Yeah. So it's 375 and then depending on where you get your images printed and what you do with them from there um, you got 25 images to deal with. So the, the, the only thing that I would highly, highly recommend is if you send your prints to a lab to be printed, which is fine, 
send them to the point, get them so late that they go, they are shipped directly to me to, de to Dennis <laughs> without you looking at them first. Yeah. I can't That's tell true. you how many times I have seen that. And we had one where they sent them from a lab. The skin tones were as red as red could be. And it was, of course, it was denied. And they they had never looked at their prints before they ever sent it. I also recommend getting at least 10 inch, if you're having a lab do it, um, get something like eight by 10, 10 inch proofs just to see if they're on the right track. Right. Yeah, I agree. Okay. And I would get an extra couple of prints in case once you lay them out and look at them, you decide to switch something out. Ella, you, your uh, portfolio is so unique. Do you mind sharing? And I can say I did prints. Ella right. did something really unique. So there are other options. And I know some other photographers, I think, have done sort of what you've done. Now, we don't like Ella, so we're not talking about what <laughs> Ella did. because <laughs> Somebody else had to deal with that issue, all right? <laughs> yeah, I did metal prints. So Dennis wasn't real happy about the weight of my portfolio. So all I can say is the, the case had wheels on it. I was aware it was heavy. So, but yeah, yeah as, I, as far I as had expensive for, uh, mine, mine was a rather I, expensive one. Rear print on Lexan. Wow. 25 prints printed on Lexan, rear printed on Lexan. So how much did yours weigh, Doran? No, that, that wasn't mine. Those are the ones I had to deal with. Oh, okay. Okay. Wow. All right. Chris, you had your hand back up. Yeah, um, you you talked about um, when the judges come in and they see your portfolio for the first time and it's on an eight foot by 20 foot wall. Um, may I assume that the uh, candidate decides the arrangement on the wall or is there a specific way that it goes on the wall? How How do you make sure it's the way you want it? We just take all 25 and throw them at the and wall. Throw and them, I just stick them up there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you send them in order? Do you number them? Do you know what? Can you use a circular arrangement? Is it linear? How is it arranged yeah. the, on the wall? The maker is responsible for the layout that we see, um, yeah. where the placement is. We have three rows. We've never had anybody do a circular one. Um, but you've got to figure out how to get 25 images in that area. So there are three rows that we can deal with um, on that 20 foot wall. Okay. Can but you I are responsible in? for laying it out and you need to send us that layout so that we can put it up on the wall properly. Now we have had members submit where they'll say, we want to, ha I want to have 4.25 inches between each image on the rack. And we will do that. Most people just show us what they want. And then we evenly spread them out the best we can. Can I, can I address, Chris, what might help um, is if you go to the ASP website, and I think it says award in a degrees, click on the fellowship, and you can see uh, people's, like everybody's layouts, print presentation. So they're usually in three rows. So when, when I was, uh, before I started doing mine, I actually went on and I know Sherry's images. I know Dennis's images. I know Gabriel's images. Um, I, I know everybody's images because I just went down and studied all of them. And I'm watching how they had everything balanced out. You know, you might have two panoramics on the outside, you know, and a vertical on the inside. Everything balances out really well. Um, so that's a great kind of visual for you. Um, you know, to go in and see all of that before you start working on yours. Ella, is my understanding that this is an hour? Yes. So yes. we're getting to where it's getting dangerous with time. I want to make sure that there are time for questions if you have questions. So if you do, um, turn your mic on and ask it. Otherwise, we'll continue to spew our knowledge to you. <laughs> Mr. Kraft? Who said that? This is Dwight. Sure. What do you got, yes, Dwight? Yes. Um, well, writing the paper, is it uh, advice that is written in uh, first or second person? I think you should do it in French. <laughs> <laughs> Please. 
Why you do it in Japanese? Well, I'll understand it. Yeah. Uh, personally, I think it should be in first person. I should. I think it should be about you, and 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 you should tell your story, and and not say it shouldn't be second person. You know, like you're trying to introduce Dwight to us. I think it should be you telling us what your heart is, why you create the images that you create. Hey, thank you. The papers are online. Many of the papers are online. So that's a great reference point where you can go in and read other people's papers. I don't recall ever reading one that wasn't in first person. I think they're all, I did this, I thought this. None of them, you know, Mr. Kraft thought this. <laughs> yeah, no. Janet, you've not really had much of a chance to talk. Yep. Um, I was thinking about what you were saying about the um, papers and the biggest struggle for me when I applied for my fellowship. Can you hear me? Because you've yes. just frozen up, Janet. Okay. Um, I was so confused about what I needed to do. And what I did was write a paper, sent it to Tom McDonald's. He read over it and gave me feedback. And the same with my images. I sent my portfolio images to Gregory Daniel, and he looked them over and said, because my first attempt at, at a, an arrangement, he said, these are all wonderful images, but I don't know really who you are. And that I've heard you guys talk about that, and I think that was really kind of hit me in the face. And then I thought, oh, am I cheating because I'm asking these other people their opinions? And then another friend of mine said, well, if you were applying for a job, you would research the company and find everything out about it that you could before you went in for that interview. So that's kind of how I approached it. And I think if I hadn't asked for help in those ways, I wouldn't understand so I think if you can, if there's someone that you can reach out that, out to that you respect and they have the time to give you some feedback, that would be really helpful on both the portfolio and the paper. I think that's a great point, Janet. And that's something I didn't realize when I applied is that you could ask for help. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I was lucky, but um, I did not understand that you could actually ask other fellows or people who had been through the process for their opinion. Um, I had non ASP people reread my paper to make to look for um, errors and stuff like that but I had mm -hmm. no idea that I could actually approach fellows who had gone through the process for their assistance so that's a great point I think we've temporarily I lost Dennis so oh no yeah <laughs> I feel I feel better about being half in half out <laughs> there you go it's nice to be able to hear you now it's awesome so yeah, and Randy, you kind of had a similar experience to Doran about your paper and how it got written, don't you? Where you just basically spoke it out to somebody? Yeah, I, I, huh. the first thing I did is I did an outline, and I would recommend everybody do an outline and get all your thoughts organized. And, you know, I'd been working on this for a couple or three years, really. And uh, I was ready to write my paper, and I was pretty confident. And I took off on a Friday afternoon early from the studio, went home that weekend to write it, sat down in front of the computer, couldn't type the first sentence all weekend long, even though I had an outline. And so, uh, you know, a friend of mine said, uh, I said, hey, I've got a, a voice recorder. So just uh, next time, just say it you know get my voice recorder and so i did that and so next second weekend i'm ready i set that voice recorder down and i start and i can't make the first sentence so i'm two weeks into this and i hadn't written the first sentence and so finally i called like an old golf buddy of mine up and i said hey would you come over and just let me tell you a story and so, you know, we cracked open a couple of beers and sat around and I told him the story, recorded it, and that was pretty much verbatim my paper. So there's several different ways you can go about it. 
That's amazing. And and I will say this: the the paper means, you know, before I before I had the experience, I was one of these people that railed against that personal paper. I said, you know, we are photographers. We don't, we're not writers. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard of in my life. And after going through that process, I am so much more proud of the paper that I did than I am the photographs that I did. And it was kind of a life changing experience for me. It reconnected me to family and friends. You know, when I started thinking about my pathways it, it 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 was very valuable to me at the time and still is. So don't don't be so negative on that. Nice, nice. I'm curious how many fellows here made work specifically for the port the portfolio specifically for the fellowship versus pulling together work you'd already done or have was in the process of doing and entering that. Christy, you all, did specifically for the fellowship. Yeah. All, all of mine were images that I had created for, for other things. All of mine, all of mine were customer clients, except for the two that I did while I was teaching classes at at uh, PPA schools. Nice, nice, Sherry. I'm sorry. What was that? Did you specifically create work for the fellowship or it's just your regular oh, work? All work I already had. Awesome. Yeah, Janet? Yeah, mine was all client work, every bit of it, except for I think I had uh, my center image was of my first grandson. Of course and it was. That was <laughs> of, it was Ike. It was Ike. Of course it was. Of course it was. He was just, well, I mean, that was my heart. You know, that was it. it it's all about capturing those moments of children's lives. And as they grow up so fast and all of a sudden they're, you know, teenagers that don't come out of their room unless there's something good to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I know it? My oldest grandson just went to college this past year. So that's just crazy. So we're glad right. to have you back, Dennis Craft. Yeah, somebody kicked me off, Doran. <laughs> well, I'm not bad too. Um, Michael, uh, Michael Pucciarelli is asking if we could have a discussion like this for the educational associate degree. And the difference, Michael, is that in the case of the fellowship, the jury comes together to do the judging. In the case of the educational associate degree, because it's only a paper, it's just a paper, not a portfolio, there's no need for the jury to come together like that. So they're all judging independently and don't really talk to each other. It's all anonymous as well. So we can't really give you an insight into the judging process because it's all very individual with the EA degree. So just okay. to didn't realize. Thanks. And, and just, just so everyone understands too, we never say who the judges are going to be or when the judging date is. And that is to protect the judges because if you were not to get it, there have in the past, there have been people that, um, don't take not getting it very well and they almost attack the judges. Mm. So well, that is one of the reasons why we never say who the judges are because it's not fair to them. And it's ruined friendships, you know, to be honest, it's yes. ruined friendships in the past, you know, when it's gotten out. So um, it's just safer that the judges stay anonymous. Yep. Yeah, unless the judges out themselves, they, they stay anonymous permanently too, unless they tell you they judge your portfolio you'll never know and they they can tell who it, that they judged it but we do ask them not to say who the other judges are right right yep okay so uh, now that we have janet back um janet everybody had a chance to kind of say what it's like for them to be a judge in the judging process I'm mm -hmm. curious, you know, what, what your experience has been and if through your words to explain the process. 
to be on the other side that a lot of us will never see. Hey, got to be um, able to catch the plane, though, don't you? <laughs> yes, yes, you do. Um, so what is it like? What was it like for me to judge the fellowship? Is that what you're saying? Yes. It was painful. It was humbling. It was exciting. I, at one point, you know, felt like, oh my gosh, how, who am I to judge someone else's work? I mean, I have all those feelings and it was, um, it was a huge honor to be asked. And then once I got there, it was very scary because I felt like, uh, I was a judge, you know, I was actually, you know, I mean, I, I know that sounds weird, but it's not like judging for merit or judging for loan because you're in a group and you're still in a group, but your opinion matters so much because they need four yeses. And if, if you're not a yes, then it's kind of a burden, but, um, but you just have to tell yourself that this is a huge, huge achievement and it needs to be held to the highest um, standards. So that's kind of, it's a tough job. It really is a tough job. It's, it's very, especially if you know the maker and, and you love them and you want them to succeed. And if, and if, if it's not to that standard, you have to just say, I'm sorry, but. It's, yeah. a, it's, like it's hard. Said, it's, it's a huge burden, but they are tasked with with upholding the integrity of the fellowship. And that is the hardest right. part. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and whether you know them or not, you're still held to that integrity. And it. it's, it's, it's a powerful experience. It really is. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I just mean it. It's, it's humbling. It's. Yeah. What's well, a scary experience. You know, if you, mm -hmm. if, if somebody's print comes up and, PPA judging and you don't merit it, you know, that's one thing, but here you're kind of rejecting somebody's body, their life's work, you know, and, and that's a very intimidating and should be intimidating thing. But, you know, uh, the best part is I think that, uh, you know, I've had people tell me that they were so glad they didn't get it maybe the first time they entered because then when they did get it, they were so proud of it, it you know, that, it, that, um, that the, the, the glad they didn't have a subpar one slip through and they got the full blown. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. If that makes sense. I, I get that. I'm glad mine didn't pass the first time because, you know, I kept going. And my paper and my portfolio is so much better. And I'm proud of my first or second one. I wouldn't have been as proud of my first one. So I. I that's, a, that's a great endorsement right there. Yep. Mm. I've seen that many times. I've seen where somebody, you know, it took them three times and you could just see the improvement in the portfolio. Mm -hmm. at first to the, to the third. So Dennis Kraft, you should talk to this part. Um, I got feedback. So it's not like they just throw you out, you know, and, and you know, and you're done. Um, after the judging, I got a call from Dennis Kraft and he told me what the judges liked, what they didn't. Um, he told me that my paper was way too long. Uh, it passed, <laughs> but he's like, you're going to get a different set of judges next time. You might want to cut it down. Um, why don't you share that so people don't feel like they're just on their own every time? So once the process is over, if you um, if you receive the fellowship or awarded the fellowship, then I call you and you jump on your bed and you're really happy. And those are easy phone calls to make. <laughs> the, the tougher ones are when the panel decides not to award the fellowship, then my responsibility then is to call and explain what they were thinking some of the things that 
came into the process in their decision of making of not awarding that fellowship. What has happened up till about the last two years was that we would all make comments and then we would write something up and send that out. But actually my wife was the one that changed this. She finally looked at me and she said, you know, this really doesn't make any sense. You know, judge number five said that he didn't like number 17 and that the whole portfolio was weak. But judge number one just made a comment that he thought the portfolio was pretty strong and he loved number 17. And when you send that to the person that did not get it, it didn't make sense. And so when I was making phone calls, people would say, well, I'm reading this, but it's not making any sense to me. So two years ago, we started recording a video at the, right after your portfolio was judged. And we would put down the synopsis from the judges of what held this one back from being a fellowship portfolio. And I think that what I've heard back from people is that it makes more sense to them to see it in the video than it did trying to read it on a piece of paper. So that is what will happen now is you would get a video from the, com from the committee, me, and uh, it would explain what the judges were thinking. And no, I don't pay on the judging panel, so you can see who's there. <laughs> but Ella, you did the first couple of videos for us the first year that we did that. Right. And uh, Doran did them last year. So um, you guys want to speak to that process, what you thought of it? I it's a lot better than, yeah, better than when we did. Sorry, Doran. Because those phone calls, those, uh, Phone calls, I'm sorry you didn't receive it. Boy, those are not fun ones to make at all. And and I get it. You know, you put, you put your life work out in front of somebody and you paid a lot of money to have it done and then not to get it. I, it's got to be disappointing. I got it. I get it. Um, well, some, people, some, some people are gracious about it. And some of them, you got to make sure your doors are locked at night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was a little intimidating to do it, but I, I agree with Janet. I mean, I didn't judge it the year that I was there. I was just working as as a chair for one year. And that is a humbling, humbling process to watch. And it's so full of integrity and honor. It's really amazing. So I was very privileged, I think, to be able to witness that process. Um, I'd also like to address the point that if your portfolio does not make it, it doesn't mean you have to have the whole thing reprinted. I know of one case uh, specifically that he submitted the entire thing over again without any changes because it's a different set of judges every single time. And uh, he made it the second time with the exact same portfolio. So. I think when you're looking at the cost of this, even if you don't make it the first time, it's not necessarily double the cost. So I no. think, yeah. I, I, like you said, I think if you, in a 25 image portfolio, I think if you would were to switch out two, three images before you resubmitted it, and some people, like you said, just resubmit the same portfolio. So, yeah. um, and we would give you some ideas on what would be best for you to do. Right, right. We're almost out of time. Any last questions for the panel here? Hey, Ted, got a question? I, oh boy. I, I, I don't know how to, I, I don't know how to put it. Back when you were talking about color, um, and I'm drawing a blank on the word I want to use, but making all your prints, uh work with each other and the paper I, I didn't know how to ask the question i mean i i totally don't understand that i, I mean if 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 I, I don't know if you have 24 airplanes and one race car in your portfolio is that is that what you mean by something that doesn't go or you know you have some portraits some landscapes and i i, I don't know it's it just it's got me so yeah, that, that, 
that would be that would be it, just what you said, but not so specific. Let's say you had portraits and you had uh everything is warm tone, really rich, warm skin colors, and then you threw in a couple of cooler uh images. That just that just kind of destroys the whole thing too. Or uh, a bunch of know, high so, key, and then you put a bunch of uh, put two or three low key in the middle of it. Or even even the fact that if you all of your portfolio, if you had twenty three images that were somber and you know like we see a lot of the real dramatic, <laughs> uh, and then you put in two Is smiling it? kids. That that uh, would, it's just that, a, I'm so eclectic. Fun. I'm so eclectic. I, I mean, I go to a presentation. Well, then, and then here's the way to do it. And you know, there's I can't remember who it was now, but one time I judged, and there was a guy that got it, and his whole thing was he was in a small town, and he was a general practitioner. And the fact that he was the town photographer, he recorded everybody's life events. So I mean, you would have to introduce that in your paper and have the panel prepared for it. And then it wouldn't be such a shock. And, and also that's that paper. It's the real introduction and, and it kind of makes you want to want to give that uh, fellowship before you ever see the portfolio, if it's done well and ties in. I have a comment on that as well. Um, uh, mine um, my paper, I explained all through the paper, um, different things that I did, um, landscapes, florals, and abstracts. So I, I talked about those and then my images reflected that. And I didn't really have one genre more than the other. So it was all balanced out and it worked. So you can do different types of things. They just have to all balance out and work. Yeah. To find that I, what I also think is a good idea to do is to find a buddy that has received their fellowship fairly recently and let them look at your portfolio and give you some ideas. Now, ultimately, the, the bottom line is up to you. You know, the buck stops there. But it's certainly not a bad thing to get opinions from other people that have been through the process. And they can say, you know, you're a little weak, you know, in your the flow or whatever you know somebody that's been through it will certainly be honest with you and just and just so you know when i when i mentioned that you know we're especially the committee is responsible for upholding that integrity of the fellowship if you get help from another fellow which is encouraged um we reach out to a select number of people to try to get them to judge we will ask them if they have helped anybody this year. And if the answer is yes, then we will not use them because we cannot have that, even if it's a perception that, you know, mm -hmm. I helped I helped Randy McNeely and Randy got it. And that's the reason. The committee tries to stay out of the helping just for that reason. Because if you don't get it, you're going to be mad at us. And if you do get it, it's going to look like you got it because we helped you. Yep. Can you quickly describe the process of picking judges once you know who supplied Dennis? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so, so let's just use a generality. Um, and, and I can talk about the people that are sitting here. So let's say let's say Sherry is entering this year and Dennis Hammond is entering this year and Dennis has got all landscapes. Sherry's got all flowers. So that's a, that's a style of photography that I could find judges that would have knowledge in that area. But then say Ella enters and she does her weird crap. Okay. <laughs> so now I need to, now I need to try to bring on a judge that can identify not identify it but can judge that properly and then we go to gabriel who is this portrait king and he's got all these medieval looking portraits from you know philip chair style so now i gotta have somebody that has a good idea of what a good 
portrait is. So try to balance a panel and that's sometimes the different portfolios we get. So, you know, if it's a, a, an artist type case like Ella's or if it's a landscape or a portrait, we have to try to find judges that are fellows that can view them honestly and know what is good and what is not good. Did that answer your question? Yeah. And how do you pick the non-fellow? Um, we take applications and that fee is a $3,000 me, yeah. <laughs> to me and Doran. And usually how we pick our non-fellow is that somebody that is interested in the fellowship, wanting to go for their fellowship, it's a good thing for them to sit through the process so they can get an idea um, of, of what it's like, what the judge is looking for. So um, a lot of people that we've selected as our non-fellow are people we think should be interested in getting their fellowship or have indicated that they would like to get their fellowship and we've asked them to come be our non-fellow. Awesome. Great information tonight. Thank you so much. Any last questions? We are out of time or over time. So we're gonna close it up and thank you so much to our fellowship judges, fellowship recipients and our audience. And thank you, Christy, for the idea of this Zoom. So good and night, everyone. Good I would night. like thank to just you say, very much. Right. Thanks I would just like to say good luck to all of you as you apply because I think there's a lot of spectacular work out there that needs to be seen. I agree. Absolutely. And if okay. you're, it's not too soon to start your paper if you're, you know, thinking about it. And That's the deadline is coming up, right? Sometime this year? Yeah, it's coming up. <laughs> yes. I don't even know 